Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing a three-piece camber kit on my Accord. If and when you guys lower your car, you're going to notice that your alignment angles and everything are a little bit different. You're going to notice that if you lower it, the wheels, they're going to want to camber in, and that's natural. Now, if you want regular tire wear, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to kick those angles back out so the wheels are straight. To do that, you can do one of two things. You can, number one, you can go get an alignment and see if your existing hardware is compatible for an alignment that severe. And if not, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to install aftermarket stuff. Now, what we're doing today is we're going to be installing a three-piece camber kit from J-Power on my Accord. This right now is the finished product. This is what it looks like. I went to an alignment shop, got it done, and with the angles right now, it's sitting perfectly the way I want it. All right, guys, so to get started on this project, these are the things you're going to need. A torque wrench to put the wheels back on and everything. We're going to need a Johnny bar to take the wheels off and break some of the nuts that are on there that might be tight. You're going to need some sockets to get the wheels off or some special ones to protect the wheel. Um, you're going to need some sockets and some ratchets. We're going to need some wrenches over here. And obviously we have the camber kit itself. So your first step is get the car up in the air, chalk the wheels, and get some jack stands underneath the car so you can get the wheel off the car. You're then going to want to remove your lug nuts that are holding on your wheel. You're then going to carefully take the wheel off the car. So with the wheel off the car, we have access to the three arms that we're going to be changing. So we have this one here that we're going to take off, this guy down here, and then we have another one on the back side. You're then going to take this one off too. Now your camber, your trailing, and your towing arms, they're all going to be changed over. So these ones right now, they're solid, and the ones that we're going to be installing, they have adjustability to it. So that gives you the option to change it and get the correct angle for a proper alignment so your tires don't get worn off prematurely. Now this kit is also available in the camber kit, and you're only going to be getting one of these arms. The kit that I have is all three. So with this setup, the three, you can get your alignment as close as you can to manufacturer spec. Now the reason why you want that is you don't want irregular tire wear. If you're spending a thousand dollars and up on nice tires, the last thing you're going to want is these tires to wear out in like a year. So you get this kit, you mount it on, and then you, after this, you go get an alignment. Instead of spending like 500 bucks at a shop for them to get you to install these camber arms and then get an alignment, what this is doing is going to save you a couple hundred bucks and you're doing the work for yourself. Not only are you learning a little bit, but you're going to have a little bit of extra cash in your pocket. This J-Power kit that I bought, it comes with all the instructions you need. This covers the Acuras, the Acura TSX, Acura TL, and the Honda Accords. They're all based off of the same chassis, so this will work for any one of these cars. It comes with instructions and diagrams for all the camber arms that you're going to be installing. The good thing about this kit is it also comes with all the, the torque specs and extra hardware you need for installing these things. Now before you install or even attempt at doing this stuff, what I would recommend is go to Honda and get new bolts for all these arms. Now the reason why you're doing that is you're replacing the rusted, corroded bolts with fresh new ones. I already installed the other sides, all three of the arms, and one of the bolts for the trailing arm was rusted out. I had to break it off and then had to install a new one. If I didn't have the extra bolts to install, I'd be screwed and my car would be out of commission for a day or two. Spend the extra little bit of money, get the new bolts. If your car is new or if you're living down south where there's not that much rust or anything, you don't really have to worry about it. So the first arm that we're going to take off is this guy down here. So this has not only the e-brake attachment to it, but it's also attached on both ends. Now the side down here is connected by a 17 mil socket and it goes on the back side over here. And the other side up top is connected to a 14 mil socket. So I'm going to take this guy down here off. And you don't want to take it off yet. You first want to go on the other side and remove and at least loosen uh, the top part. So you're going to remove this up here, get the socket on and break it loose. Once you have this loose, what you're going to do is you're going to grab a 12 mil, a 12 mil socket, and you're going to remove the e-brake cable attached on the bottom. So 
So just like that, and you're gonna save the bolt that you just took off. So you can then go ahead and start taking the rest of them off. So after that bolt appears out, what you can do is you can grab your 17 mil and start taking this guy off. Now when taking these arms off, I found it easier that if you get your jack and you lift up the knuckle a bit, the weight is then taken off uh, the arms. Now you don't want to jack it up too much, you only want a little bit. And just like that, the bolt comes out. So you get both of these bolts from the top and bottom, you put these aside. And then we have to install the new arm. So this is what the old arm looks like. It's got this little spot here for the e-brake. And you can see that it's not adjustable. Now the new one looks like this. So you got a couple different spots to put that bolt that we just took out. We have that so you can have any kind of um, suspension setup that you want. So if you want to go with the cambered look, or you want it to go straight, flush, you know, whatever you're going for, these are capable of it. Now you can see here that it's a three-piece kit. So you have the top part, you have this screw part, and then you have the bottom. So just for a point of reference, the two bolts that we have, there's a long one and a short one. The long one goes up top towards the center of the car, and this one here, the short one, is attached to the knuckle. So you get the long bolt, run it through the new one, your new arm, attach them both at the end, and when you're installing these, you're gonna wanna try and get both of these to line up. You wanna set it up so both of these are at the same height, so you can get the bolt to go through both of them at the bottom as well. That's gonna give you the same size for both of these arms. You're gonna to go to an alignment shop and they're gonna take care of all of your measurements and everything and fix it all. So at first, you're gonna to wanna to tighten everything together, make sure there's no slack. Like this. And to change the height, you're gonna to wanna to use the middle piece and turn that so both of the arms move at the same rate. So I'm gonna get my bolt, run it through the first one, and you can see it doesn't go through it yet. So I'm gonna have to lower it a little bit more. And there, that's the correct height. So once you're at this point, you get these. You can tighten these up. and then you're gonna mount this onto the car. Now, if you're not gonna be getting new bolts and installing them, what you can do right now is, now that the bolts are out, you can get a wire wheel and brush these up. So with your new arm, you're gonna install it first at the top, and you're gonna get the long bolt and run it through. Now, you're not gonna look for it tight, you're just gonna want it on there. Now, if you get in this situation where these don't line up properly, what you can do is you can extend this, the center piece, extend it to however far you need, put it back, and then tighten it back to wherever it was. Now, if you had those, if you had those nuts screwed on, it'll tighten it back to the perfect spec. Now, in your kit that you got, what you should have is new bolts. Now the reason why you have these is because in the old arm, the bolt was actually built in. So this, we're gonna have to install at the bottom. And make sure when you're putting these back together, the bolts are facing this way. So the threaded part is on this side. Now when you're installing your brake, the e-brake cable, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the bolt, run it through the bottom, And then with the extra screw that they, that they gave you from J-Power, you're gonna attach this and run it through the top. 
Now to tighten everything on, what I'm using is a 12 mil socket and a 13 mil wrench. Now for the top and the bottom bolts of the arm, what you tighten them to is 43 foot pounds. So you're gonna grab a torque wrench and you're gonna tighten both of these down. So now that the first arm right here is on, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move to the next one. So we're gonna be installing this guy. So for this arm, you're gonna need a 17 mil socket. You're gonna be taking this off, this nut, and you're gonna be taking the other nut over here off. Now when you take these bolts off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you take this off with it and you keep track of which one goes where. Now just like before, we're gonna get our jack. We're gonna put it underneath the knuckle and we're gonna relieve the stress. Now this bolt we have right here isn't your standard bolt that you're used to. The head is, it's got an oval shape to it instead of circular and it stays inside these two little mounts on the side. That makes sure that this bolt stays straight. So you take the nut off, and then you're gonna have to tap this guy here out. So I'm first gonna spray with WD-40. So just to show you, this is a washer that came off of there. Well, this came off of the backside, and you can see that it's not a circle. Now as you can see, the bolt is offset, so the center is not in the middle. To remove this camber arm, it's basically the exact same thing that we did for the other arms. So you just loosen this guy down here in the bottom, and then you loosen the guy at the top. Both of them are 14 mils. So loosen these up. So you take that guy out, that bolt, and you do the same thing for the bottom one. And just like that, the last arm comes out. So you grab your camber arms, you run the bolt through the top again, just like we did before, and you align these up so the bottoms are the same. So with the bolt through there, we can see that the bottom, these two are lined up as well. So we're gonna mount this and we're gonna install this last bar. So for the last bar, you're gonna get this guy, tighten it up, just so it's on there. And then if you have to, you're gonna extend this so the bolts down here reach. So as you can see here, the bolt doesn't want to go in because it's too short. So get the center piece, extend it a bit, so it will fit. And then after that's in, we tighten this back. Now on the back side of this bolt, we have to install another one of these. So now these are on, you're gonna tighten this up. Now you can do the same thing for this bolt. Now again, this, this bolt and the other one we just mounted, they both have to be tightened to 43 foot-pounds. So you grab your torque wrench, you put the bit on, just like that. So I'll do it again, this is the click you're looking for. That. So guys, a couple minutes ago I just told you guys to get new hardware whenever you're doing this stuff. Now I can't stress enough on how important that is. For the last week, I've had my car jacked up in the air and I haven't been able to use it because I had to grind off one of the bolts on the back on the trailing arm because it was rusted out. I figured, you know what, it'll be easy. I'll grind it out, I'll go to Honda, buy a couple new ones and put them on. But it's such a pain in the butt. I wasn't able to find a bolt. I had to special order it and it took a couple days for it to come in. So guys, this is all the replacement hardware that you're gonna need for your uh, install. It's gonna have all the bolts, all the nuts and everything that you're gonna need when you're installing your three-arm camera kit for both sides. So I'm gonna be installing this bolt here, through here, but before I do that, I wanna make sure that it doesn't rust out and it's not a pain in the ass next time if I wanna remove it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install 
some 3M silicone paste. So I'm just gonna get this stuff and coat the outside. Now you wanna make sure that you don't do the threads because if you do your threads uh, and you go to torque everything down, you're gonna have an off torque spec. It's not gonna tighten properly the way it should. So after you're done with that, insert it in here. Put on the washer on the back and then the nut behind that. Now once the bolt and nut are on there it's snug, you can grab your torque wrench and you can tighten it down to 43 foot-pounds. Once you hear that click, it's on there good, and you can move on to the next bolt. Now the same thing goes for all the other bolts. So this one here that I'm going to put in, goes in here, and then the included hardware that comes with the camber kit is a nut, just like this. So you grab it, you put the bolt through there, Get the nut, put it on the back side, and you tighten this down again to 43 foot-pounds. Once you have all three of these camber arms installed on both sides of the car, make sure that these, the sections in the middle where you can loosen and tighten, make sure that those are snug. You don't need to tighten them down too much right now. You have to make sure that these are tight enough just to get you down to the alignment shop where they can align the car and set everything in where it's supposed to be. Now with this camber kit, you have a couple of degrees, three both ways to adjust. You can adjust your toe, one degree each way, same thing with the trailer nut. You can adjust everything you want to get whatever kind of angle you want. If you're looking for that really severe cambered like this, you're not going to get that with this kit. What this is here to do is it's supposed to get all the alignment angles as close as you can to normal, like factory specs, as much as you can. So now that this is all tightened up, we can put the wheel back on, go to the alignment shop, and have them set everything in the way it's supposed to. When we come back, we're going to take the wheel off, we're going to tighten everything down to spec, we're going to rust proof everything so we don't have another problem down the road with rust, and then we're going to put the wheel back on. Alright guys, so we're back from the wheel shop, we have the car aligned and everything good. We're going to make sure that the parts we just installed, they're not going to rust out on us prematurely. So what we're going to use to do that is rust check. I've used this stuff before, you can use it on the bottom of the car, the inside, suspension, everywhere you can really think about where there's going to be rust, you can spray it there. You have to make sure that when you spray this down on any part, you want to make sure that it's not only clean, but it's also dry. So I went ahead, I cleaned everything up, I used Mother's Wheel Cleaner, I used a Mother's Detailing Brush, and I've used Goof Off wherever I needed to. And then I sprayed it down with water, and then I got a dryer and dried everything. So I'm going to go ahead now and spray this. So as you guys can see, I've done a 50-50 split. On this side over here, I've already got the rust check spray done. On this side over here, I left everything dry, so I'm gonna spray that down right now. So you just get your can, you shake it, and you cover any part that's bare metal. When you spray this stuff down, it might drip onto the floor, that's fine. But what you wanna do after this is you want to take it down a dusty road and you want to try and get as much dust as you can to get kicked up in here so all this oil that we basically sprayed on is covered. After you've done that, it's job done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like what you see and you want to see more, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And again, thanks for watching.